terrible things in Jersey. What happened in Jersey? This was... I can't tell you that story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good story. <laughs> Off the record, perhaps. <laughs> uh, you came up with some very good ones. Um, this was this was the dry dock and quite a, 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 a celebrated thing. We we went to dry dock in the West India dock and then the dry dock sank. It was a floating dock. Mm -hmm. It was quite small. It had been built for minesweepers uh, and I think had a 14 foot draft. And the schooners were 16 and a half feet. And for some years the practice had been to put the schooners in. They docked one one each year, so they alternated. And so this dry dock wasn't really big enough for the schooners, but what they did was they, they built up the ventilators and access pipes and tunnels and everything on the top of it, built them up a little bit, and then they would sink the dry dock down so the end of it went underwater, and then they could just get the schooner in and, and, and lift it up. And this particular year, I don't know quite what went wrong, but actually in a way it's not terribly surprising because this is a very unsound practice because of course, although you stop the water going in, because with the, 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 the pontoon, the sponsons of the, of the dry dock being underwater at their lower end, uh, of course the thing was actually fairly chronically unstable. Mm. And I suspect what happened was that the, as the Sir Winston Churchill was being put into the dry dock, I think possibly they heaved on the headlines and it was enough to sort of capsize the, the dock in a longitudinal sense. Water started flooding down and the whole dry dock just sank underneath the schooner in the West India dock, and we were all left. It was quite an astonishing sight to see these great bubbles of air coming out of this thing as it sort of settled down. That, gosh. It was, and there we were with no dry dock. And, uh, Back to the pub. Well, the first thing was to phone up Peter Archer, and a word should be said about Peter Archer. Peter Archer was a Royal Naval Captain Engineer. Very fine gentleman. Very keen sailing man. Did marvellous work the STA. He joined originally as the treasurer, but they were a bit sly with him because they uh, he, he, they realised he was an engineer, so they thought that they could get him to be the superintendent engineer at the same time without paying him. Uh, and bearing in mind, he was, he was well retired. He worked terribly hard during the refits, running up and down, doing doing his work in the office in Portsmouth, and, and then running up to us, leaving at six in the morning or something to be with us first thing, leaving at lunchtime and then back again. But anyway, so the first thing to do was to ring Peter Archer and, and, and tell him what had happened. So I phoned him up and we got on the end of the line, we got June Baker. And the old hands will remember June Baker, who was very much the Queen Bee in those days. And er, ruled everybody, the director, the deputy director, Peter Archer, ruled everybody with a rod of iron. Uh, and so we rang June. June, you need to talk to Peter Archer. Well, you can't, he's busy. Well, June, you know, it's a bit important, you know. Um, can you, can you ask him? Yeah, I think we need to talk to him. Well, he's busy. And eventually, well, what's he doing that's so busy? Captain Lees, who was the director, is locked in the loo and Peter's getting him out. <laughs> <laughs> so with a dry dock sunk, two Royal, Naval, two, two Royal Naval captains trying to, one of them trying to let the other one out of the loo. But as a result of that, we went off, Peter and I went off investigating, and we found a dry dock in Shoreham, which hadn't much been used and was just big enough for the schooners. Really, really just, only just big enough. And uh, so the Malcolm Miller went down there and we sailed off on New Year's Eve, or motored off, and left the masts behind in London, and we motored off down to Shoreham. And I, I insisted that we should have a track chart, so this became Voyage 293A, and we had a little track chart. And Dougie Can's mother was on board, uh, a number of great names, Liz Whitlam, uh, that's Ken. That's Ken Gates. Is Liz uh, Rodney was with us. Ken Gates, John Liston, uh, Charlie was with us. Uh, Helen Carter. These were all sort of, you know, well known because it wasn't a cruise. Obviously, they were just no. people we sort of got out, got out, of, got to come up from home to help us. And there we went off and had New Year's Eve at sea, somewhere off Beachy Head, sixteen bells. Yep, the New Year's Eve. Eight bells for the old year and eight bells for the new year. And put the ship into dry dock in Shoreham. And for some years afterwards, we regularly dry docked in Shoreham. Blow the man down, boys, blow the man down. 